numbers down to a level where we have wrestled them down to the ground so we can move to the next phase of our recovery. There is hope tonight that we are starting to move back to some kind of normalcy. But like the governor just said, there's still a lot of work to be done here. More than 15,000 people have been infected with coronavirus in Washington state as of yesterday. Good evening, I'm Vanessa Mishania. Tomorrow, the state will enter into the governor's first phase of his plan to reopen the state. And there are four phases in total, each of which will ease up on restrictions on travel and businesses. And each one will require the number of coronavirus cases to decrease. So phase one will see the return of some outdoor recreation and construction with limitations. But people will still be required to social distance. And one big difference in phase one is churches are starting to allow to begin to meet again only if they conduct those services in parking lots. King 5's Amy Marino shows us how one church is making it work. We're with Jesus right now. Instead of staring into the eyes of the faithful Sunday morning, Pastor Dean Curry was preaching to a sea of headlights at our church 253, a congregation safely distanced by car windows, and they could watch their leader give his sermon from a perch over the church parking lot. He's going to love us through no matter what. Curry says the church was among those who lobbied the governor to allow this. It really is a safe and sane way for people to worship. Car honks replace the usual amen you might have heard in a traditional church sanctuary. Like many churches, they've had services online and people can still watch that way. But the pastor says you can't quite replicate the connection that comes from seeing each other. So gathering like this, there's something special that happens, even though you're in your car with your windows rolled up, to see other people, to hear them honking the horn. Up in Everett, New Life Church was hosting a drive through food drive. Pastor Jim Romack says drive through services might work for some congregations, but they don't have the space. Doing a, a, a parking lot service would make no sense for us, because even during this time, our our reach and response is so much bigger than our parking lot. Our church 253 has a website to help other churches plan a parking lot service. As this one wraps up, church members can drive by the church's food pantry and drop off food. The church has also been dropping off groceries to those in the community who can't get out. There you go. Thank you. Pastor Curry admits it's a little different doing his sermon in the parking lot with rubber gloves on. Oh, sure. But he's not feeling discouraged. These times are difficult, but you, it brings out the best in people, too. You can feel them getting stronger, caring more about others, reaching out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amy Marino, King 5 News. Donation centers across the Seattle area are starting to reopen, giving some relief to folks holding on to things right now. So today, several Goodwill locations opened up and there was no shortage of donations, as you can see from the video here. Lane Street was filled with cars just waiting to pull up to Goodwill's donation center right near downtown Seattle. Now tomorrow, four Seattle area Goodwills will reopen. Donors can drop off items at the downtown Seattle location, again on Lane Street, Ravenna, their Woodenville location, and Martha Lake in Linwood. They cannot take any large items right now, though, so no furniture. Well, have you seen this soldier? Take a look at your screen hill here. Military authorities at JBLM say that he is missing. Army specialist Hunter Bruner was last seen Wednesday afternoon. Bruner's car was found abandoned in the lot right near the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. If you have any credible information on where specialist Bruner is, you are urged to contact the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division. A cluster of coronavirus cases have been reported in the Lummi Nation. In a statement released this weekend, the Lummi Public Health Department says that more than 40 people have been infected, and all of these new infections were in people younger than 40. So 44% were younger than 19, 50% were in their 20s, 6% were in their 30s. The Lummi Reservation is right outside of Whatcom County, a few miles west of Bellingham. Meanwhile, Yakima County has the highest rate of coronavirus cases on the West Coast. The county has 250,000 people, and as of Friday, Yakima County had just over 1,100 cases. So that rate translates to 455 cases for every 100,000 people. 
Health experts link this high rate to a couple different factors here. A large number of essential workers, a lot of cases in long-term care facilities, and a large agricultural workforce that lives in close quarters. Compared to other coronavirus sequences that are available, this is of a natural origin. The World Health Organization says the novel coronavirus originated in nature. Speaking on the BBC's Andrew Marr show, the WHO COVID-19 technical lead said that compared to other coronavirus genetic sequences, this one does come from bats. Faced times of testing before. Following 9-11, I saw a great nation rise as one to honor the brave, to grieve with the grieving, and to embrace unavoidable new duties. Former President George W. Bush shared a message of hope today. He tweeted this video encouraging Americans to be our best selves during the coronavirus pandemic. Now, we also referenced the September 11th terrorist attacks, saying that just like that moment, America will heal and make it through this. Bush also called for an end to partisanship in the fight against coronavirus. In a tweet today, President Trump responded to the former president, saying he appreciates the message, but, quote, where was he during impeachment calling for putting partisanship aside? He was nowhere to be found and speaking up against the greatest hoax in American history. The reopening just is not happening fast enough for some people. Many Americans right now are frustrated that businesses are not open and many just want to get back to work. Protests are happening across the nation. This one here in Kentucky today. And in Huntington Beach in SoCal, just days after people flooded the streets there to demand the California governor reopen the state, it is a much different scene today. Empty. Lifeguards and police were out turning people away. But take a look at this. Just 15 miles south of Huntington Beach, crowds flooded Laguna Beach to protest the stay-at-home order. People are coming out, and we expect people to come out. But we don't want any organized activity. We don't want crowds gathering. We don't want someone barbecuing with their family and friends. And in New York City, a thousand police officers deployed in parks across the city to enforce social distancing. White House health officials are now sounding the alarm about Americans getting too close together. Over 30 states have relaxed their stay-at-home orders, but medical experts fear that will only lead to a new surge in cases.